It's Dean McLeod. They call me Dino. My birth date is October 4th, 1945. I live in Brampton, Ontario. My biggest thrill was uh, scoring my first uh, Junior A goal in Oshawa against the great Merv Marshall. And, uh, and uh, I can always remember it. There was, uh, we got beat 15 to three by that, that game, by the way. And uh, I always remember um, uh, face off on our end and the loose ball came to me and I tiptoed up to the crease and gave Merv a little fake and Dwight Davies hit me from behind just when I was coming forward with the ball and I think the ball instead of going to the top corner hooked down to the bottom and bounced in well I was after the hit from Davies I was in the net and Harry Benham the referee was in the corner I looked like this through the mesh and Harry put your hands up he put his hands up for a goal and uh, that was that was my first thrill and uh, of, of playing junior lacrosse. I, I became the, uh, I guess, the assistant manager of the Junior B team, and then uh, two years later I went up to the Junior A's, I think it was 69, and uh, I, Revis Bennett was coaching the team, and I became the statistician of that team, and the next year I was the general manager of the team for, for 10 years, and then I, uh, I um, went from there for three years uh, with the majors as co-managers with the late Jim Nesbitt, uh, co-general managers, and we, uh, we were able to win the uh, Man Cup in 1980. Um, it's probably the most unlikely Man Cup championship in the, in the CLA's history. We, we had a record of four wins and 16 losses during the season. We made the playoffs because there was only four teams. Um, Billy, the late Bill Coghill was uh, coaching uh, our team, and. He wanted to be relieved and we didn't have anybody else. And then about halfway through the season, um, I talked to my late great friend, uh, Gus McCauley, John McCauley, and enticed him to come over and take over the team with about three games left in the season. And um, when he came, then the players came out of the woodwork then. And uh, we, uh, we ended up, uh, in the two Ontario rounds against Brooklyn and Peterborough. I forget exactly what order, but we won 4-1 and 4-2. And then the Salmon Bellies came to town to Memorial and we beat them 4-1. And at the end of the season, we had 16 wins and 20 losses and Man Cup champions. So I don't think that's going to be a record that's going to be uh, broken anytime soon. You won the ones you needed to. We won the ones we needed to. and uh, and. Uh, you know, anybody from Brampton, anybody from Ontario knows the quality of, uh, of coaching of uh, Gus McCauley. He was probably the worst guy on the bench, but probably the, with, along with Jim Bishop, the, uh, the uh, best motivator that you could ever ask for. And uh, uh, the, as, as Bish, when you got to like him, you know, players to go through the wall for him, and that's what they did for McCauley. And uh, as I said, we... Uh, we brought the uh, Man Cup to Brampton, I think it was the first time in about 50 years. Back in the day when I, when I managed the teams, whenever a stick got broken, I would take it home because a broken lacrosse stick, you can't do anything with it. I took it home for the leather because I taught myself with the help of, of uh, Joe Logan and uh, Six Nations uh, showing me how to restring a stick. And I looked at it and I said, Martin, I said, where would I have ever gotten this from? And I still don't know. I absolutely do not know. I said to, uh, I said to Cap Bomberry at one time later on, and I took it and showed it to him, and I said, when, when is this stick from? And he said, it's probably circa about 1930s, somewhere in the 30s. So it's, it's, it's in around uh, 85 to 90 years old now. So, and then the other one, about 25 years ago, I got the idea of taking one and, uh, um, coming through my junior league, uh, there was a lot of players that uh, played that went on to National Hockey League careers. And um, I started getting them signed. The first signature I had on was uh, Wayne Gretzky's, who Wayne was a lacrosse player in Brantford and uh, uh, never played after about Bantam or Midget. But um, there's 35 signatures on here. Bobby Orr, Red Story, the late John Ferguson, um, Jerry Cheevers from here in St. Catharines, Dave Andrichuk, my friend Joey Neuendijk, Gary Roberts, um, the list Bob Ganey, Doug Jarvis, uh, Rick Walmsley, 
Um, the list goes on, Brendan Shanahan, but um, again, uh, there's still a few more that I want to get. There's not much room, but uh, as Joey Neurendijk says to me all the time, he said, um, he said it's still the greatest game in the world. And uh, he only wished that uh, he could make the money in lacrosse that he did in hockey. He wouldn't have even thought of hockey. He would have played lacrosse. But uh, 35 names on it, 11 of them are lacrosse, or Canadian uh, uh, or Hockey Hall of Famers. Uh, so it shows the value of the what Joey always told me, the uh, hand-eye coordination, but it, it's something that I'm pretty proud of. And um, like I said, there's uh, the one name I want to get on is Connor McDavid. So if he listens to this, uh, I want to make an appointment to get his name on here. The 32nd clock, obviously. The offense, defense, if they could ever legislate that out of the game, it would be a better game. Um, uh, the athletes now are, no disregard to the athletes of the past, all the great ones, but uh, the, the, the athletes now, doesn't matter what sport, uh, there, there's money in it, so they come better prepared to play the game. And uh, the skill level of the, the kids coming out of the minor systems, and the minor systems have to be given all the credit for producing all of these great athletes that uh, play junior B, junior A, uh, major series, National Lacrosse League. Uh, the number of scholarships now compared to back in your day is just, you know, like me personally, I had, a, I had an offer from uh, an Ivy League school and uh, I ended up turning it down and getting married instead. So no regrets whatsoever, except I don't know what college life was like. Well, I had no intention of ever being the commissioner of the league. I'll make that very clear, but um, I was up in Peterborough uh, playing an old-timers hockey tournament and uh, I think it's the Duro Arena. It wasn't in Memorial Center, but it was a small arena just outside between Peterborough and Keene. And um, the late Dan Quinlan, uh, Lee Vitarelli, and um, oh, the coach's name, uh, Benny Floyd, came to the game and we went up to the bar to have a beer after. and. The three of them were sitting there and I'm looking and we just played a Peterborough team and beaten them. And uh, I said, what are you clowns doing here? And they said, well, we want to talk to you. I said, well, what about? Well, we want, we got an interest of you being our commissioner. And I said, I've got no interest. I'm, I'm general manager of the Brampton Majors. And uh, we'd been to two man cups in a row, won one and lost one in New West and still had a pretty decent team. And uh, uh, so I said, all due respect, thanks, but no thanks. So anyway, that was on a Friday night. Saturday they came back and uh, they said, we want to re-talk to you. <laughs> so anyway, I, I, I listened to them and it was, it was flattering that they would uh, single me out to, to be their commissioner. Um, but uh, anyway, I talked to my wife and she said, well, why don't you try it? So. She's a smart one in our family, so I listened to her and uh, I took the job and I, and I said, how long is this job going to be? And Danny Quinlan, uh, the late Dan, said, well, we'd like you to at least do two or three years so we can have some continuity and then when you leave, we'll get somebody and you can mentor them in and so on. And I said, okay, that sounds pretty good. So uh, long story short, two or three years turned into 37 years. Oh, well, <clears throat> you, you got to break it down into two years. Um, Bruce Wanless, you know, mentioned the Johnny Davises and, and the Jack Beyondas and Paul Parnells, uh, the John McCauleys, um, Bruce Wanless himself. Um, there's a guy that was probably the toughest defensive lacrosse player I ever saw. And uh, I believe he won a junior A scoring championship. Uh, you don't see that anymore. Um, then you've got the, uh, the, new, the, the more recent era, back when I played, you know, we got the Gaylord Powelses, um, Jimmy Higgs, um, uh, Donnie Stinson's, uh, uh, just to name a few. And then through my commissionership, um, guys like, you know, tough defensive lacrosse players like Kyle Rubish and, uh, and um, Sid Smith out of Six Nations, offensive players. There's 
too many to, to name. Um, uh, Dougie Evans out of Peterborough, um, uh, Cody Jamison out of Six Nations, uh, Jeff Teat right now. Um, Jeff Teat is probably going to set all kinds of Canadian scoring records uh, by the time he's finished. Uh, in, his, uh, in his five years as a junior, I presented him 14 trophies. That's unprecedented. If a player can win two or three league awards, that's something Jeff, Jeff Teat won 14. Um, so, you know, you, you, you just, uh, Joey Neuendijk, um, uh, one of the best lacrosse players ever, uh, gave up his junior A career after four years of junior, still had two left. Uh, he went and did something stupid and signed with the Calgary Flames so he couldn't play lacrosse anymore. So uh, every time I see Joe, we always talk about that. Um, Stan Jonathan, toughest guy that ever played the game that I ever saw. Um, so to, to, to earmark, you'd, you'd have to sit down and probably think for a day and uh, the list would probably be 75 to 100 players that are uh, quality players. Matty Vince right here in St. Catharines, probably the best goalie ever that I've seen. Bruce Wanless is here, Pat Baker, um, Bobby Savage in Brampton, guys like that. But uh, you, uh, you can't compare the, to me, you can't compare the two eras because it's two different games. Well, all of my best friends are lacrosse people. And um, people from hockey ask me, like, you know, how come you guys are all such great friends? Like, I played junior B hockey in Brampton. I can't remember the name of some of my teammates because they came from all over the province. And, um, but in the game of lacrosse, you, you start playing when you're four or five years old, not in my case, but mostly, and you play with those same teammates until you're 44 or 45 if you want to play that long. So there's a uh, camaraderie ship there, and uh, you know, you, you, you go to the wall for each other. Um, hockey doesn't have that. Um, Hockey's got the big dollars and, you know, people move out of town when they're 14 years old and play junior A and then on to the National Hockey League. Um, but, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the years have been good to me, met a lot of good friends right across Canada. Um, maybe not so many in British Columbia, but uh, <laughs> in any case, um, a lot of times I'd get, pardon me, say pissed off at different things and, uh, um, you know, well, what am I doing this for? I got better things to do. And I go home and rant and rave at, at home. And my wife, she's, like I said, she's the smartest one in our family. And she would calm me down and probably ulterior motive. She didn't want me quitting because I'd be at home bugging her. But uh, she knew I had the love and passion for the game. And uh, she was probably my biggest rock. Mm -hmm.